What is good, guys? Today we are going to discuss my reaction from last night's NHL draft lottery, as well as some market tips and things that I'm noticing with the Stanley Cup edition cards and the Team of the Year cards currently. So let's hop right into it. So let's go over the things I'm noticing with the market in terms of the Stanley Cup edition cards. So if you don't really know the in-depth of what the cards are, um, every playoff team got two 91 overall cards, and they will basically go up by plus two for every win they get. And if they win the series, which would mean they all get bumped to 99, uh, they will double their synergies, meaning that they'd have four synergies and they would have the same four, but too. So there's some Stanley Cup edition cards that have BU. They would get two to BU and things like that. So they are extremely good cards. There is inherent risk involved. If you're looking over the playoffs, um, you know, sports is not predictive. If it was, everyone would be making millions of dollars. If we are going to, if I had to bet some serious money, there's really only two series that I think are slam dunks. It would be one of the biggest upsets in recent memory if they were to lose um, that would be Tampa Bay obviously losing to Columbus although however I do think if Columbus wins the first game of the series that it will go much longer than you know the four or five that's predicted by most so that would mean that Tyler Johnson and Braden Coburn would get the 99 overalls Stanley Cup edition cards uh, but other than that, the only other one I would think is Washington, and not because the Capitals are that much better than Carolina, but I think that Carolina is going to suffer from the happy-to-be-there kind of thing. I think they'll steal a win at home because of you know how great that crowd has been, which is amazing because Carolina was such a bad attendance and whatnot. But now there's some you know heat behind them. I think that those would be the only two teams where, um, you know, if you really wanted to get their cards, Stanley Cup edition cards, that they'd be pretty much guaranteed to move on to the second round. Now, outside of that, there is some, you know, specific ones that are kind of crazy. Last week, there was the comp season, team of the year comp season, where um, the top 100 got Jake Gensel. Um, everyone needs to remember that the team of the year cards go up, will always be the highest rated cards. So if the Stanley Cup edition cards, the Jake Gensel, for example, uh, the 91 for Pittsburgh goes up, that means the team of the year will go up as well. Now, the team of the year starts at 92, and the, um, the Stanley Cup edition card starts at 91. Now, uh, these aren't the same Penguins as before, but I think that of all series, this one has the has one of the bigger potentials to go seven games. I think maybe other than uh, Sharks and Vegas, there isn't really a tightly contested series where it's kind of a coin flip depending on a few things than the uh, Penguins and Islanders. So what I want to point out, though, however, is that it's crazy to me that the Stanley Cup edition cards are going for more than what the, the Team of the Year edition is. Now, the reason for that is because the Stanley Cup edition cards seem to have the same drop rate as Team of the Year, which is extremely low. Um, however, the, the fact that 100 players were guaranteed a 92 Jake Gensel from comp seasons, and you know the better players usually have the better team, so not a lot of teams were able to just keep the 92 Jake Gensel because they already have pretty stacked teams. So if you look on the market right now, for example, there's three or four Team of the Year Jake Gensel's out for under 400k when the Stanley Cup Edition cards are well over 400. Some of them are in the sixes, which just boggles my mind. So if you're going to buy a Penguin, buy the Jake Gensel Team of the Year because it will go up the same even if the Stanley Cup Edition card wins. And you're not really inheriting any risk. I mean... Obviously, if they get swept, which is, would be insane, um, you're still left with technically the higher rated card in the 92 Jake Gensel. So that's just something to watch out for. Also, um, when you're going to invest in them, you need to remember that uh, I hear a lot of people that are just buying up certain cards, like, for example, Tyler Johnson and Braden Coburn for the Lightning um, with the plans on reselling. Um, if you look at Braden Coburn, I still think he's going to be one of the best cards when they win the first when they win when they win the first round, um, and he gets boosted to a 99 just because of how big he is. But if you look at his shot, he's only going to get plus eight, so his his accuracy is only going to be in the 80s for a defenseman. Now that isn't game breaking or anything like that, but it's just it's not as high as some of the other team of the years that are 99s, and these cards are going for like six seven hundred k. So just remember there is risk involved. I mean it's not guaranteed the Lightning are going to win. But also, 
If you're planning on reselling, I want to give you guys an example of what happened earlier in the year if you're kind of not paying attention or maybe you're new to the market. So I'll give you a perfect example. I've said this one throughout uh, my content this year is uh, Taylor Hall's Evo card. So back in November, um, as you know, this year, there was a plus two cap on every card. So Taylor Hall got his plus two for November. But the problem was is that he had two more milestones um, that he could get. And if he got them all within November, that means in December, he wouldn't, it would, he would need to get a prime time or something that isn't predictive, um, as opposed to just getting one goal. So everyone, the, the once, um, once he didn't, you know, he didn't hit that milestone and he was going to get the, get it the next month early on in December. Everyone bought up Taylor Hall Evo cards for like 550k, 600. I did myself. I bought three. This is back in early December. He got his 91 upgrade. He got his upgrade. But the problem was that everyone was trying to beat the market and they were buying all these cards up instantly with the plan on reselling. So the problem with that is that the second that the change happens, they get boosted to 99, the market gets flooded with these Taylor Hall cards. And I, I think I ended up losing a couple, you know, maybe like 50 K on each one because everyone was just trying to sell them. They weren't keeping them. They weren't buying them to keep them. They were buying them to try and make coins. So be careful with, um, if you're thinking of buying up some of the, uh, some of the cards. Now, if you're going, you know, all in and you want to try and call your shot, I think that, you know, Columbus cards are on the cheaper end. If you look right now, the Stanley Cup edition cards, there's a lot of teams, obviously, uh, Colorado's, for example, like Kerfoot and Girard are going for cheaper. Under under 400K is what I consider cheaper right now because the, the card pulls are so low, there just isn't very many on the market, so that is technically a cheap price for them. And if you're going to buy them up, like... I think that prices are going to fluctuate very hard if, say, I'll give you an example. If everyone buys up Alex Kerfoot cards for 320 k all right? No one expects Colorado to win, although I think that they will go seven games at least um, against Calgary. Um, that everyone's selling it for cheap. Now, if you buy them all up and, you know, they win a game, now he's a 93. But I don't think you're going to make a ton of money back because, again, um, if every there's going to be a lot of people that are doing that. There's going to be a lot of people trying to play the market a ton. I think you need to be careful and not anticipate that there's going to be a huge influx of coins. But there aren't very many, so if you have the capital to invest, it would be it would be, you know, uh, it would be interesting and fun for you at least. But um, the last thing I want to talk about, and as it comes to the market right now, just be careful that your 99s aren't slipping by. Like there's, you can buy Phil Kessel now for under 500k. His Evo, I got him for 480 last night. You know, there's some 99s, um, like Patrick Kane, even going for like 600 is Evo, and even sometimes under that. You know, those are 99 cards. Like they're not going to get any better. I know that the Stanley Cup cards are the new hotness. But those are end game cards, so just be wary that you know you're not chasing what's new and risky. Because if they're not 99s yet, they gotta win their series first instead of just playing it safe and grabbing the for sure already 99s. That's what you know, and that's how you that's how you play it safe. But if you're looking to really cash in, like really cash in, um, Islanders cards are pretty cheap. Um, I have a feeling that they will win the first round. I don't know why. I just think that they will beat the Pens, which is why I say grab the Jake Gensel. That's the uh, you know, grab grab the team of the year, Jake Gensel, if you really want one because he's going for cheaper. Um, I think the Sharks will beat Vegas if Carlson's okay. And I did my Stanley Cup prediction. You can watch that video if you'd like. But, um, you know, the, the, the bigger upsets, I don't think Columbus really has a chance to win the series. Uh, same with Carolina. So, you know, those those cards like uh, Michael Furland, who is awesome. And if they go long in the series and they can win a few games and he can get an upgrade, that'd be an awesome card. He's going for pretty cheap. Um, so those are ones that I would look into, all right? Last thing I want to talk about is my reaction to the draft lottery. I am not a big proponent of the draft lottery. I low-key hate it. Um, last night was kind of a perfect example of why. Um, specifically, the, the problem that it causes, obviously it's in place to make sure that people don't tank, um, but... The problem that they've run into is there's a few teams that really needed high-end picks and have just been consistently bodied by this draft process, and it's you know almost borderline ruined their franchise. Buffalo being one, um, you know Buffalo's finished last a few times and has only won the lottery once with with Rasmus Dahlin. Um, thinking back to the the um, you know the Connor McDavid draft, like that. I mean Eichel's a good player, but imagine them having Connor McDavid. Um, the other one that's just absolutely 
absolutely ridiculous is Arizona at this point. Arizona had had lost out on so many high end picks because of the draft lottery, and it's it's you're not going to get free agents to sign there. It's just it's just very difficult for teams like that. So last night when um, you know even though I hate L.A., I hate Anaheim, um, you know I hate well I really just hate those two teams to be honest with you. L.A. getting bumped. Um, out of the top three, they need a top prospect almost more than anyone. They are old, busted, and just, um, oh God, I love the fact the Kings suck. But anyways, the one I was um, significantly struck with, if you haven't seen the draft lottery, who ended up getting first was the New Jersey Devils. Again, kind of boring in my opinion, but I mean, hey, um, Jack Hughes is going to be um, a devil, and they're going to have an insane one-two punch of him and Hughes here for the next like decade. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the Rangers getting number two, I do like that because they are in a full rebuild. Uh, they need a really high-end prospect, and getting Capo Caco is, is sick. That's going to be a great winger for them, although I think that they did need a center a little bit more, but um, that's fine. Third place was the Blackhawks. Now, like... The Blackhawks aren't necessarily bad because of lack of talent. They just need to move one or two contracts, and they'll be fine again. And by fine, I mean they'll be playoff contenders yet again. They they have Kane and Taves. And, you know, I mean Debrinka. Like they have a very good team. They just need to move Seabrook's money. To be honest with you, Crawford at, at a high at a high cap hit kind of hurts too. But he's a pretty good goaltender when he isn't hurt. Um, them getting third, moving all the way up to get third overall is just. Um, you know, it's kind of rough. Now, if auto, the, the team that made out the best here was the Senators. The Senators getting lucked out from being the meme of the century with Colorado falling out of first place all the way down to fourth for the second consecutive year. Um, they lucked out because this year's draft, they got Brady Kachuk last year. The Senators did. They opted. They called their shot. They said, hey, we're going to take Kachuk. Uh, here instead of you know potentially getting Jack Hughes next year because their team was going to be trash no matter what everyone knew it, um, but they ended up getting out fourth in this draft after the one and two does kind of fall off a little bit not not considerably but quite quite a bit and uh, Kachuk was already looks like a real NHLer so I think that they did well there uh, the trade is still garbage for Ottawa but I think that it, it was kind of a sigh of relief the fact that they didn't have to watch Jack Hughes in Colorado for the next you know ten years uh, followed by L A at five Detroit at six and buffalo at seven edmonton at eight thank god edmonton didn't win again um anaheim at nine vancouver at 10 uh the flyers at 11 minnesota at 12 13 is the panthers 14th is arizona and 15th is the montreal canadians last thing i want to say my teams i'm a big sharks fan i have been for 20 years same with the red sox and patriots when my teams are bad they will be eventually well, specifically the Patriots when Brady and Belichick are gone. But when they are bad, I want them to be terrible. I don't want them to go through a couple seasons where they're trying to hang on and just make the playoffs because now what you have in Montreal specifically is a team that probably is going to perform much worse next year, much worse. And um, because I think that they, they played it well above their head and Carey Price carried them. And, you know, maybe they do the same thing next year. But what could have happened – you know, um, them getting a top three pick because based on talent on their roster, it's not like any of those teams I just named that are that are drafting ahead of them. They're not much better than so. It just kind of that's the problem. I think there's a there's a pressure on Canadian teams specifically where you see them not ever tank fully, except for Ottawa now, and you you end up with what the Leafs went through from 2000 and nine till 2016 basically where they kind of half in half out and they almost make the playoffs and then it ruins their draft pick and then they're just kind of in this mediocrity for a long time but uh, anyways guys the Stanley Cup playoffs start tonight Sharks play a big huge game one Carlson everyone's back I'm stoked can't wait to watch it and uh, but yeah guys that'll do it for today's video I will see you guys later on, on stream 7 p.m to 10 p.m uh, eastern time at no sleep at, at no sleeves 12 on twitch so guys thank you guys for watching i will see you guys next time